yes, as a matter of fact, uh, I just realized I have my own vision lights. I have my iPad. How fun is this? Uh, yes, the question was, how did I get the job on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno? Uh, at the Jay Leno Show. Now, in uh, 2009, uh, Jay was retired from The Tonight Show by NBC, and the job was given to Conan. Uh, and then Conan had the show, but they didn't want to let Jay go. So what they did was, is they uh, gave him a primetime show. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that very well? That's me, Jay. Uh, one of the, the last week of The Tonight Show, they gave us uh, all a, a picture with Jay on the set. So, uh, he's, he's a great guy. Uh, so, oh, look, does she want more water? Oh, we'll pick her up. <laughs> Right. How old is she? Uh, she looks like she's having fun now. Hey, the world is pretty cool from the world is pretty cool upside down, huh? So there was a, an audition that came down where they weren't going to have the in-studio announcer like the Ed McMahon or or the traditional <coughs> Tonight Show announcer. They were just going to have a voiceover guy. So the only line in the audition was, it's the Jay Leno show, and now here's Jay Leno. Like, what am I supposed to do with that? So I basically did it every possible, I gave him 13 takes of every possible way I could, I could do it. So it was like, uh, the way that I ended up doing, uh, it's the Jay Leno show, and now your host, Jay Leno. And now, the Jay Leno show, with your host, Jay Leno. And now, the Jay Leno show with your host, Jay Leno. Then there was this guy, and now, the Jay Leno Show. So it was, you know, it was like a guy who was maybe 16. Now it's the Jay Leno Show. Now, here's Jay Leno. So I'm like, well, that gives him a range. So they had hired a guy, or they had, a, had four of us come in, uh, and they hired a guy to do the test shows for like a week, and I thought, all right, well, I didn't get the job, that's fine. But on Thursday, before they went live, I think it was September 11th, 2009 was the first day. The Thursday before they went live, they had me come back and re-audition me and they had me do a bunch of different voices like I just did. And they said, okay, well, 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 well thank you. And I was like, okay, that's cool. So Friday night, the night, the Friday before the Monday live show, uh, they, my agent called at 6.40 p.m. and I was napping. And the phone rang and I was like, oh. And I hear everybody yelling and cheering and applauding in the background of my agency. And they're like, yeah, you just booked the, the announcer on the Jay Leno show. I'm like, what? I'm like, yeah, you'll be there, you know, 11 a.m. Monday at NBC Alameda. I'm like, okay, well, I... And I'm like, did I just dream that? So I called my agent, I'm like, hey, Vinny, uh, did I just book the, to the Jay Leno show? Yeah, yeah, I'm like, what, 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 what? So uh, they were, initially they were pre-recording me, uh, and I wanted to do it live, like, with everybody with the show there, and then they realized that when they cut together the opening with all the graphics and the names popping up, that I had been trained as a promo guy to be able to do that, what they call two picture, where you just kind of you see it once, you develop the rhythm of how things go, and then you can anticipate it. You have the script, and you have the monitor, and you're like watching for the names to come up. So the director said, hey, can I see you afterwards? I'm like, yeah. I was like, oh boy, here we go. Two days in, and I'm already fired. She's, she's like, you're, you're hitting these on, on the first take. I'm like, yeah. Well, I get lucky sometimes, not knowing that there's a million guys in voiceover who are actually trained to do that. So, like, yeah, she said, how would you like to come in and do it live with the band? And I'm like, I thought you'd never ask. So I started doing it that Wednesday live at, and I come in at 3.30 every day, they taped at 4. And then at 5 minutes to 4, I go in the booth, and I run through it with the director a couple times off the air. And then at 3.59, getting ready, and you got your headset, you got the monitor, you got it in, you hear the band like warming up the audience, and then 10 seconds before 4 o'clock, the band stops, and you catch your breath, and you pray to God, and you, and you cross your fingers, and uh, you hear the uh, AD go 10, 9, 8, I'm telling you, it's the most exciting thing in the world, and it wasn't live, it was live to tape. <coughs> But you gotta remember that the band's ready to go, Jay's ready to go, he's backstage, and Jay's like a toucher. He's like touching everything, touching the ball. This is how he gets up to, to, go, to go out there. And if I blow it, it's, you know, it's like turning a record player off in the middle of the record. So I'm like, I've got, I gotta do this, I gotta do this. So if you did blow something, you could always re-record it at the end of the show when the audience has gone home. 
but I tried not to do that. I wanted to get it right all the time. So it's three, two, they don't say one, and then you hear two. And then it's like, announce. You hear that in your headset, and you go, it's the Jay Leno Show with Jay Leno. Tonight, Jay welcomes Tom Cruise, Amazing Animals with Jeff Hanna, and headlines. And now, Jay Leno. And then they'd wipe, and then he'd come up, and I'd be like, whew. <laughs> And I said something like, uh, wow, this is the greatest job. You really only have to be great for 26 seconds. And then you got the rest of the day off. And the guy, uh, my Patrick Smith, who was the audio engineer, is like, yeah, but it took you 26 years to get here. I'm like, that's true. <laughs> so, uh, but when he got the Tonight Show, uh, when they gave the Tonight Show back in March of 2010, uh, he just kept everything the way it was. He says, no, I like the, like the off-camera voiceover announcer. <clears throat> Uh, the nice thing about that job was, in addition to doing uh, all of the, we got a lot of mics up here. Uh, in addition to doing all of the announces, they also figured out, oh, are you the same Wally Weir from Family Guy and all those other cartoons? I'm like, yeah. They said, so you can do a bunch of voices, huh? I said, that's what I do. It's like, oh, good. Would you voice this one for a comedy bit? Would you voice this? Would you voice that? Would you voice that? So I was doing anything from promo, fake promo trailers to infomercial to. Uh, TV promo announcers, to movie trailer announcers, to newsmen, to sports guys, to random cartoon characters that they throw. You just never knew what those brilliant writers, what they were going to come up with from one day to the next. And they'd be throwing me the most amazing, crazy, strange stuff. There's a thing called video metaphor that they did that was a running gag. And they wanted this real, like, educational film narrator. Some guy who was really boring who would rather be in a library. And now it's time for a video metaphor. Today's video metaphor is, and it was just this really super boring guy, but it, was, it ended up being very funny. So uh, that was the first time in Tonight Show history, I think, that they were actually using their announcer at, also as one of the utility players in the cast, which I'm kind of very proud of because I don't think they're ever gonna probably do that again. I'm the first voiceover only announcer in Tonight Show history, only the seventh full-time announcer in Tonight Show history, and I think the only one who ever was used in the cast is Utility Voice. So I'm, uh, I'm kind of proud of that, actually. So thank you.